today we are joined by a very talented filmmaker whose uh, debut feature, directorial feature, Article 370, has emerged as one of the initial 100 crore grosses of the year, and rightly so. And I'm talking about Article 370 here. So, Aditya Jambli, a welcome to you on filmishomi.com. And thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much. Pleasure, pleasure is mine. Thank you so much. I believe this is your first UK interaction as well. So this makes it even more special for us. Uh, yeah, you know, yeah. <laughs> Aditya, I think it's wonderful because you, before Article 370, you had uh, quite a few short films which you've either written and directed for. Um, I think it's quite wonderful how you made a, a film called Amritsar Junction, which was, again, a yeah. very serious social-driven uh, topic. It was, uh, again, a very sort of revolves around historical aspects, things that really showcase the checkered past of India. Uh, but yeah. here, Article 370, you know, the stakes were much higher, where you had to also amalgamate this with the high obtain action sequences, which, of course, Aditya Dhar, the producer of the film, has rightfully done in films like Uri. So how much of a, uh, would you say, a, a collaborative effort was it between you both to sort of bring your style of storytelling as well as his uh, appeal and mass action appeal that he's had with his films as well. I think, of course, uh, with Uri, I think it was one of the very well-made army-based film uh, in the recent times. It uh, set a tone for uh, a lot of other films that are going to come. It was aspirational uh, for those films to, you know, go for armed, uh, you know, topics which are dealing with armed forces and high-octane action, as you just mentioned. Uh, so I think it it definitely had an impact. Uh, uh, as far as when we went uh, into the making of this film, Article 370, uh, it was a good reference because we the same like the same people the team has uh, done this kind of a thing before. So there was a kind of a benchmark that was very crucial for us and for me also because I'm a director. So people the same producer is coming out with a film. Uh, so it is a kind of an expectation that you you have when you start the project. Uh, and at the same time, somewhere down the line, I always knew that how this film is different from Uri, uh, the surgical strike, because in, it's surg like Uri, the surgical strike is a film on a strike, on a literal strike uh, that you do on the territory of an uh, enemy. Mm -hmm. But as opposed to uh, abrogation of Article 370 being a very legal terminology, it's a it's an abrogation of a law. Uh, it has uh, complexities and challenges which are on paper as opposed to, you know, how an enemy with an AK-47 uh, would pose a threat to the country. Uh, so I think somewhere down the line, I was very, um, uh, that challenge kind of drove me because there were a lot of people before we started also saying that, you know, this this kind of a film, which is so complex, has so, many jobs, so much of technicalities, I think uh, the audience might not like it or probably we are not ready for a political thriller driven by so much of information uh as as the fundamental uh, backbone of it but again i i was very clear that uh, uh, it that challenge is what drives uh, drives uh, me as a filmmaker because uh, uh, i think uh, west has done it so well before like mm -hmm. you know house of cards uh, you the most dramatic scenes are inside a chamber to people talking so i was always fascinated why don't we do that and why are we not able to do that or why are we not opting to do that so somewhere down the line, I think that hunger was very uh, fresh in my my mind as a filmmaker. So Aditya always um, trusted in that thought. Uh, he backed me very well uh, and said, you know, you have a voice, let it flow. Uh, and uh, action is, of course, a very important element in this film as well. But uh, at the same time, we should, because, you know, when you're doing this kind of a film, we should honestly make that film. Uh, you yeah. can't do an Article 370 film by saying that, you know, I'm, I'm going to shy away from information. Let's not give too much of information to the audience. Let's rather just build it on drama, on action. Then no. as a filmmaker, you're, you're really not giving the USP. You're, you're misinterpreting a USP of the film itself. And I think that's a, that's a recipe for disaster. So somewhere down the line, I think Aditya also trusted me when I said that, you know what, I, I, would, I would give you information in a way where you will feel uh, dramatic about it. Uh, because even even there, if you think about it in that terms, the decisions which are made in PMO chambers or, you know, closed doors are the ones which are changing the fate of a nation. It's 100%. much, much bigger than, uh, it's much bigger than, you know, one particular mission of a strike or anything. So we knew that gravity was so huge 
that you have to deal with media you have to deal with the opposition you have to deal with politics you have to deal with ground situation in kashmir so i think the stakes are much higher even if you have uh, information flowing um, so i think that that just helped and then of course it was a collaborative effort uh, we we dealt with the action in a certain way uh, the the uri reference always helped because that's something that we have done aditya has done before uh, so it was just a good uh, good uh, good collaborative force i feel and i think you know absolute props to the research as well that's been gone into the film um i was really i think a lot of us were really surprised to 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 know and understand that you know article 370 wasn't just you know like you mentioned about the abrogation of the statute but so many other uh you know things were hidden uh you know the statute certain things that were hidden there was obviously missing pages that were there and i think it was it's quite bizarre because obviously this had this happened there was a so much effort even in real life had gone into actually presenting this to the supreme court and then of course the rest is history uh i think when you were going through the research yourself as a filmmaker uh you know in your mind because obviously you're getting fed all this information and you're having to then process that information and then think about how to artistically present that do you ever find it quite ironic that it's quite complex pieces of information and yet you have to also go through that complex process of art and filmmaking and visionary uh storytelling how did you balance those aspects in your mind at that point i think uh, somewhere down the line i think the credit also goes to i think uh, the field uh, which i belong to originally before i ended up in filmmaking i was an engineer before so uh, somewhere down the line i think um, information technicality uh aspects which are tricky uh, you know the the way the deleted clause and everything the whole drama behind that missing clause which was in the document and all it it is something that i organically loved i still remember the time when i actually figured out after the research was put on the paper and i understood as a filmmaker and as a researcher at that point where how this happened like how a single clause could actually uh be a wall between me understanding article 370 abrogation and how that was actually stopping the abrogation process how complex that uh, topic was i remember when i had that i understood it i grasped it i just got out of the chair and i said this is uh, this is like uh, this is a famous uh, matlab this is a scene in all together it's a scene and i could so the whole thing is that it was not about the balance i think it was about getting uh, getting astonished and getting passionate about the very very the authenticity of that research you know because mm-hmm. if you are really passionate and you really appreciate what had happened and how it happened the actual drama organic drama which is in it i think then everything flows uh, so if, if i if i don't uh, enjoy it bef- in the research i don't think i would have been able to do something by which you would as an audience would enjoy it so i think somewhere down the line when the research was happening and i was enjoying it myself i could then understand okay my next target is going to be how i make it interesting for you as an audience but that first thing where i enjoyed it myself has to be organic i can't force myself to enjoy something which i don't or won't rather so i think when that happened uh, it was it was amazing it was it was something that uh, i was just then the only concerning point was should, will i be able to do it uh, do justice to it and dramatically present it for the audience where they also enjoy it and uh, i think we also take it in also i would say another point here is that we sometimes take audience for granted that they won't understand certain things i think present audience has been exposed to such a huge amount of content in different genres in different uh, languages in different fields altogether maybe documentaries or fiction both i think the audience uh, is somebody who definitely deserves the credit for uh, getting things we necessarily don't have to spoon feed each and everything we should just have a trust in the conviction that we are portraying and if we do it very well then i think the audience would uh, you know give the response in that terms absolutely now i want to talk a bit more about the visionary oh, i i absolutely loved um the color schemes that you had in the film uh, i thought the predominantly green blue and brown colors i felt like added a really sense of urgency uh there was a sense of contrast between you know uh terror and hateful business you know used on you know sort of spreading hatred and evil and then also the, the blue perhaps referenced the the beauty of kashmir the tranquility 
of what is the value represents. Um, and I love that contrast that you had there. Uh, what, again, sort of um, really influenced your decision in choosing the color palette that you did? I think I should, obviously, uh, me and my DOP, uh, Siddharth Wasani, was an amazing, talented DOP. We have a very young talent in present cinema, uh, Indian cinema, I would say. Uh, it was always uh, about understanding uh, the difference in two things, of course. Understanding the difference in Kashmir and Delhi, which is, Delhi is the place where you have more control. You are making decisions. You are, uh, it's kind of an authority. And when it comes to Kashmir, it's a very, it's a, it's a very uncertain territory you are in. Uh, you have a lot of conflicts. You have to deal with a lot of facets on ground. Uh, and it's pretty much has a history of being a valley, which is uh, kind of blood ridden, a lot of chaos and everything. Plus, then there is another metaphorical uh, image of Kashmir, which we always say, which is kind of lost, uh, was lost for so many years because of the conflict, which was, uh, it was a heaven on earth. It, it is a heaven on earth. So somewhere down the line, we decided that that lost heaven is the feeling that we want for Kashmir, because that's the feeling with which a local Kashmiri lives each and every day. He, he necessarily goes through it more than anybody else in India, where he, uh, the children there or even the locals, Kashmiris, are going through it each and every day. Their color is kind of lost uh, from their perspective lens. Uh, so we wanted to give that uh, more weightage because that's, that's somehow related to Article 370 uh, in the film. And in, in case of Delhi, it was more control. It was more about, you know, what happens in the government chambers, you know, where you have the authority and it's more about mind games as opposed to uh, anything uh, in, in real perspective. You know, it's anything in mechanical. It's more about what is how you take the steps. It's like a chessboard game. Mm. So I think we, we stick to that. And uh, even I would also mention there were certain, like if you see the climax of how we shot uh, Rajya Sabha, uh, mm. where the bill was passed, we try to stick to television kind of uh, framing because that's how a normal audience has seen Rajya Sabha before. Yeah. So we didn't go for, you know, too much of treatment driven moving shots and all because uh, it gives a perspective of realism, I feel, because that's how me as an Indian have seen those old videos or, uh, you know, anything in the news when we look at Rajya Sabha or, you know, how, how the leaders talk. It's pretty much top shot, uh, pretty static. It doesn't yeah. move, doesn't try to create a drama. It's, it's drama is in the characters, drama is in what they talk about, you know, all that. So somewhere mm -hmm. down the line, that was the whole uh, whole uh, ball game that we don't try and do something. The effort needs to come out, uh, you know, organically. Even I would also mention Pulwama. I mean, I think it's one of the only, uh, because now Pulwama has been portrayed in so many different films. Uh, but I'm, as a director, I'm proud of the fact that me and my DOPs always right from the day one when we were trying to do the short breakdown, I never wanted to come out of the or come out of the bus. I always wanted to be inside the bus uh, till the final blast is happening because that's how my character saw Pulwama. Uh, it, it didn't know what is happening. It was a surprise attack from a, a perspective that we didn't know where it is going to come from. So I think that was uh, that that those all decisions which the DOP and the team, entire which team and my team direction team took, and we stood by it because many a times you take these kind of bold decisions. But there will be so many voices which will try and say it might not work. It is uh, something that the Indian audience is not ready for. It will be too experimental. We just were trying to know it will work. We, we just have to present it with conviction. And uh, somewhere down the line, I think it worked. Beautifully articulated. And I think, uh, you know, what I really liked about Article 370 is that, of course, even though the subject is about the abrogation, and of course, it's right. also about the armed forces who really have laid their lives for the nation, I I yeah. really admire the fact that it's not hateful or jingoistic in any way. You've not capitalized on the whole idea of showcasing one community or one country as bad, and you've taken a bit of a a bit of a in a way a co maybe corporate or a neutral stance in the sense where you're just saying that terrorism is a lucrative business and that's exactly why it happens because it's true that is the root of every evil. It's it's the it's the money. You take that away, then, then there's no terrorism at all, you know. Uh, and I think I love that stance you took. Um, again, how conscious were you uh in doing so? Because we've obviously had films like, for example, um, Kashmir Files and Kerala Story last year, which obviously were really good films in in their respective way, but obviously it attracted a lot of negative criticism. I mean, see, you know, one can obviously support the film for what 
what they're showing and exposing the reality. But at the same time, you can also understand why people might be concerned about it. So, you know, where did you kind of have to find that middle ground as well? I think uh, it's a very, very, very amazing question, actually. Uh, see, the thing was always for me, uh, if I'm doing a political uh, thriller drama, I didn't want the audience to get distracted with anything else other than what I say. Right. I didn't want the audience to get distracted with a character. I didn't want the audience to get distracted with a, a particular symbol, uh, a particular ideology. I wanted the audience to understand how this mission, which deals with Article 370, has taken place. How a group of people who definitely deserve the credit, maybe if it's a political leader, or maybe even the a National Investigation Agency, or the Armed Forces, CRPF in Kashmir, PMO bureaucrats, how did they pull off something like this? Because when West does it, we have so much amazing work which gets the credit for you know showcasing those stories. Hmm. But somewhere down the line, when it comes to India, we always have a tendency to look at West. We don't have the tendency to look inside. So right. I think if we look at if we look at Zero Dark Thirty, which showcased how Osama bin Laden was um, hmm. terminated, uh, we we always will uh, you know will appreciate it for the craft for everything. But if you look at Paul, like as a mission standpoint, I think Article 370 is one of the biggest successful missions ever conducted by a government uh, mm-hmm. or by a team. You know, so I think it's my job then as a filmmaker or a storyteller to make anybody who is not even the who probably has a notion that okay, this film doesn't have a uh, this film is going to be jingoistic or this film probably is going to be done with some wrong intent. It's my job to show that craft to the, that audience. And make him appreciate the mission, appreciate the team which was behind it. I think because of that kind of a clear cut focus, I think automatically, uh, you know, it just it just channelized every every aspect of it uh, in that particular zone. I still remember there were a few people who asked me, oh, don't you think we should include this particular political leader as well? Or don't you think, uh, you know, it will garner more claps, it will garner more uh, emotion in that aspect? I always had one thing about it. I was like, I don't want to give importance to entities. I want the importance to go clear cut to the mission and the team which pulled it off. So I think organically also, if you see, that's the whole reason. If you see the introduction points of the political leaders, when they come in the screenplay, it's it's they come organically when you want them to come. They don't come uh, inorganically at some point in the first half itself. So if you see the second half, it starts when the authority is required. When you need the Delhi authority to be in the picture to make us understand and show their organic power and make a statement or green light a project or green light a mission and take us forward in that particular story. So I think that was very crucial. That uh, that intent was very pure and simple. Uh, you we have a uh, people all all people say right now that it's a it, it has such a good emotion of patriotism and everything, but it it's it's organic. I don't think it's a forced patriotism. 100%. It's something that you should organically feel. That's why in the entire film, there is not a single shot where a protagonist is is taking the Indian flag and waving it somewhere. But you feel it. You feel the love, the affection, the whole patriotism in that character's eyes. You don't really have to do a, a jingoistic act for it. There is not a, like it, Shashwat has composed such an amazing music. Yeah. But that music speaks to the, it, it talks about patriotism. It talks about the love for the country. We are proud to be an Indian, but it's not forced. It's still, you know, it, it, then it is eternal. Then I don't get out of the theater thinking something has been forced on me. I just feel proud being an Indian. I feel proud that our country did something amazing. And I think it's a mission that probably will go in the history books as one of the biggest missions successfully made. Exit plans in US missions have failed miserably. They are, right. they are one of those missions where you have to learn what not to do. Yet, being an Indian, I'm proud of the fact that we have made a mission, which is a good standpoint of what to do, you know, as a good reference to what has to be done and how it has to be done without a single uh, innocent blood being spilled on the streets of Kashmir. That, that makes it more successful, yeah. I think. No violence makes it, uh, makes it so successful. So I think that deserves, uh, that deserves a recognition in Indian cinema. Oh, absolutely. No, no, very well said there again. Um, and I think, you know, we talking about, this whole female empowerment movement that's happening in in, in the cinema, which is so fantastic. And I think people quite have conveniently overlooked the fact that this is also a very strong feminist story in many ways. 
uh, you know, I, I think the two leading ladies that you've you've had here. I mean, I mean, of course, Yami was, I'm sure, a natural choice because, I mean, it's added to the production house. So, you know, I mean, I'm sure it was definitely like a, a very clear decision there. But I think getting Priya Mani on board was also a very a fascinating casting choice. Um, I think for you also, not just to get these two wonderful ladies together, but perhaps to present the stories. Because, you know, they do say when you're writing a... Uh, a story that's from a different gender, it does help to have a bit more of an authentic voice. How did you ensure uh, to make sure that it does come across as authentic and not necessarily making a huge statement on it being told from the perspectives of females? I think uh, I think it was also about, uh, you know, I never thought about it, actually, to tell you uh, the fact. I have been answering this question a lot after the release of the film. But now if I think back, I never thought about it as a statement or, you know, trying to prove a point or that, you know, we can do this kind of a casting or anything. It's it's great. It worked, but it was never uh, forcefully thought about. It was very simple. I was like, uh, it was something that was inspired from the research. So, for example, that one scene where Jakub Sheik's character is thrown off the building oh, through God. the window. Yeah. That was that was something. The task for me was not to make it look filmy because it had happened. In fact, uh, factually, it was the sixth floor from which it had happened. I have shown fourth floor. That's the only discrepancy I have in the film because I didn't find the sixth floor. It was also a little difficult to shoot. So we had to do it from the fourth floor. But it had actually happened. Now, the NIA agent who did it was a female agent. Hmm. So... It was, it, it's like when you know it has happened and it is already shocking. As a research also, when you're looking at how, 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 how the hell did she pull it off? But yet you're like, then if I have to show it with a male protagonist, I just lose the, lose the authenticity, which, which I have to be loyal to. I can't sleep very well if I change the gender at that point after knowing it has happened with a female. <laughs> so for me, it was just like, you know, it, it, if it is true, then I have to either if I don't show a female protagonist and I show a male protagonist, then I shouldn't say that it is. Then, then it doesn't make any sense because then uh, there was something so dramatic because of the whole point that a female protagonist could push a, a separatist leader out of the window and make him say some things, make him answer things which were so critical for the national security. Now mm. suddenly I change the gender, it just loses its soul. Right. There's nothing left then. It's basically, that was the beat. Even PMO bureaucrat uh, Priyamani, who played uh, uh, Rajeshwari Swaminathan, in the research spoke about so many, it's like an amalgamation of two, three characters together. But again, having that, uh, there were so many female PMO bureaucrats who were part of the mission. So, and I also felt that it was a perfect balance. You have a home minister, you have a prime minister character, which are so larger than, you know, the stature is so heavy already. So along with that, you have a force going by, you know, Priyamani and Yami together. It just, it's then, then, then the story takes over. And I think as an actor, uh, that cooperation really was so good that, you know, the story is above everybody. Like Yami keeps mentioning that for me, the story is the hero. I think that idea then seeped in. So everybody got their due, um, I would say wavelength due, uh, you know, bandwidth to showcase the story in their own character perspective uh, correctly. And having mentioned that, even if you like, you just, uh, I'll just answer one more part, which you had asked before about how that is not a Jengoism, you know, or I, we, we didn't do a forced patriotism and all that. So even if you see Yakub Sheikh's character, there is a scene where Yakub Sheikh's character is actually feeding some uh, uh, medicine to his own daughter yeah. when he's suddenly taken out. It was something that I, I, I was again and again questioned. Why are you showing that? My point is uh, antagonists are ek to smart. Okay. In real life, they are very smart. Secondly, they are human. So it's it's not like they, you can't, it's a gray area. That's right. the point. It's always gray. So showing them in a human side, in, 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 in fact, uh, accentuates the drama in a different space because the way he deals with his daughter is not the way he deals with Kashmir. It's so different. It, it, there, is, there is no love or compassion when it comes to Kashmir uh, as a valley. But when it comes to his daughter, uh, it's a different, altogether a different man. So I think that uh, that was a very um, uh, something that I'm really proud of. Something that I really feel, you know, that's that's the change of tonality which I wanted to crack with antagonists in the film overall, right. and that worked out very well. I've got to ask you though, Aditya, uh, as a playing devil's advocate, because obviously it was amazing how the film was actually mentioned by you know Mr. Narendra Modi, the Indian Prime Minister, 
uh, and I think you know it was quite a lovely surprise I think for everyone to really get that appreciation because obviously it's your hard work it's your baby that's being mentioned by the leader of your country uh, do you think though if he had not mentioned the film in his speech how do you think the fate would have been different if at all at the box office I to organically I'm believer that the first day first show uh, or you know as we say Friday show when we start opening the film I think a good film will always have that uh, you know uh, audience uh, reacting to the first day first show would be the organic reaction of an audience on that first day the fate is sealed by the audience I to also believe it's not sealed by any premier shows that we do you know before the release we have the tendency of doing premier shows or special screenings uh, all across maybe for the industry for some you know elite people around um, critics for example but i genuinely feel that the film's fate is decided on the friday uh, when you go as a general audience paying the price of the ticket and watching that film you come out of the theater either you will say that this film is not good film or you will tell the world that this is a film that deserves uh, a watch and you yep. please go and watch i think that in itself the leader of the country uh, appreciating and saying that you know uh, the facts probably would be seen by the entire world about article 370 has been definitely a uh, matlab a, a very you know, honestly it has been like a proud moment for me as a filmmaker as a young filmmaker uh we'll always look forward for that day when we will meet uh, the prime minister of the country uh, and uh, if he mentions it uh, if it's it's a great thing for my family for everybody whom, whom i know uh, it's a proud feeling but at the same time i also feel that it's it's at the end of the day it's the audience who is deciding it if uh, the audience didn't like the film uh, nothing can help the film but organically the audience liking the film making their own videos in the theaters uh and then making the marketing matlab it audience was doing the marketing i've never seen that kind of a response where audience is doing the marketing they are writing big big posts on facebooks on insta on everywhere tagging the director producer everybody and saying that please go and watch this film so i think the organic response they were they were uh, the audience was marketing it by itself i mean i've never seen that kind of a response where audience is you know uh, showcasing it on twitter on insta on all the social handles giving reviews by themselves uh, it it just it just exploded uh, in a different way and i think that was because the film was uh, probably they liked the film it it can't be garnered by anything else uh, i think mm-hmm. that's and i think it's it's i'm lucky uh, i'm really grateful that this happens because i've been told also that it doesn't happen more often in this industry with when you're making films so i also try to enjoy that moment um, uh, you know because i was really thrilled that the way i went to the theater suddenly for sudden uh, you know just uh, you know surprise visits kind of a thing and the way the audience was reacting it was massively uh, massively energetic it was different altogether you know you've had the masala entertainers and you know the low key sort of social driven stuff but now we're seeing the middle ground uh where you have films like Kashmir Files and Kerala Story and of course even though they depict like sensitive topics and for some people contestable topics um there is also a sense of it sort of finding its place amongst the masses as well so what are you making of this whole revolution that's taking place in Indian cinema and do you think it's a momentary thing or do you think it's a long term change and shift in the cinema space yeah uh, i think uh, i think it's very difficult to generalize anything uh, i would feel uh, that's what is my learning i think uh, because i think uh, i think audience is looking at it as something that connects or something that doesn't connect me as an audience uh, of course i mean politics is there in these kind of films there are certain films which has sensitive topics as you mentioned uh, but i think everything is all the genres are in the audience if it's politics also there is a part of me that will have politics if it's a romcom i think part of me will have romance a uh, part of me will have a comedy a uh, part of me will have a uh, inspiration uh, so i think it it all boils down to uh, doesn't boil down to a genre or a, a certain kind of films i think it all boils down to do i get connected as an audience or not uh, if we see the success stories in the in the past 6 months also i mean a film like 12th fail 
uh, doesn't have politics uh, it it just has amazing storytelling and it connects so well it's an inspirational story uh, people just uh, take it uh, i mean they just uh, i mean it's a massive hit uh, in spite of all the limited resources in which they made it and everything uh, so i think it it's very difficult to generalize this uh, as what kind of cinema is coming up one thing 100% i do agree is that the audience is looking at films and calling them big films or grand films not only on the base, based on the uh, on the on the budget of a film or the scale which is put in the resources alone or the face of the film they are looking at content as well uh, but uh, i don't think it's possible to uh, uh, generalize it and give it a formula i mm-hmm. think if we, if let's say uh, article 370 works tomorrow as a filmmaker if i think about it okay this has worked because of so and so many things uh, i might as well uh, come with another film uh, apply the same logic apply the same calculation and uh, then let's see how how it 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 reacts on the box office i think that would be a very very uh, wrong step to do it in that zone because it then organically needs to speak to the filmmaker the filmmaker organically needs to honestly give it his best and uh, do justice with that story uh, and the two stories are going to be way apart they are going to be different they cannot be matlab uh, you can't put a formula on it and imagine that it will work so uh, coming to the second part of your question whether it's a temporary thing or not i think it's not a temporary thing but uh, I, when i answer that question i'm not necessarily saying uh, and categorizing those films as uh, uh, as a sensitive politics ka drama or you know truth revealing films as i'm just saying good film and a bad film something that connects and something which doesn't so i think what is not temporary is the trust that the audience is putting in the content driven films i don't think it's temporary if there is another film which will come with that much content i think audience will receive it with open arms aditya i think it's also wonderful that you're going but yet you've managed to really uh, sort of understand different cultural milieus very well uh, i think what you have done with uh, you know uh, in in some of your other shorts as well uh i think it's it's pretty amazing how you've done that of course with article 370 i think going forward you've got a very another fascinating project coming up called baramulla which we yeah, saw yeah. the uh the first look at the beginning of, of uh, article 370 so talk to me about that because again you know we were talking about strong women that you've had for article 370 and here you are you've got uh, bhasha sumbli who i thought was incredible in kashmir files uh you know she's also a part of this project man of call is there uh we don't know much about this about this project of course because i'm sure you want to keep it under wraps to build that anticipation um but again it does seem to be a very gripping thriller with a very strong political backdrop what can you tell us about that uh so baramulla is a is a supernatural action thriller uh it it mixes the genres in such a way that i don't know how to give a reference to that film Uh, because i think um, it, it kashmir and supernatural elements are never mixed together uh, we have never seen the kashmir in that perspective lens of you know where the alternate realities are going to come together there'll be myths around that valley um, certain certain myths and certain cultures are going to uh, pop up uh, creating horrors and dreads all around the story line uh, so i think that's that's the different kashmir altogether it's completely uh the kashmir that is uh, having snow throughout it's a winter uh, story uh, so it's it's a completely different kashmir as opposed to article 370 ka kashmir it doesn't have politics in it but it does uh, it does have um, i think socio cultural fabric of kashmir uh, mm-hmm. and it tries to go little deeper in it but it goes deeper as a local it goes deeper because your protagonist is uh, manokol is playing a kashmiri bhasha sumli is playing a kashmiri uh manokol is a, a dsp uh he's playing a character of a dsp who is coming into the valley to investigate a very important uh, uh part of the story um so i think it 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 touches all and the entire socio political fabric of kashmir with myths and with lot of dreads uh, and horror and supernatural elements uh you know clubbing together it does have it does have though a very significant history of kashmir that uh, that is linked to that story uh but uh, it's it's unlike anything else uh, i mean uh, that that's the whole reason why i picked uh, baramulla and i wrote that story myself was because i wanted to create a, a horror and supernatural film which uh, kind of uh, just doesn't play on the facts of you know what you show to the audience 
it tries to go a little deeper where the you know the the demons inside you start staying with you for a long time after you watch the film after you complete the film as well so i think uh, that was that is very uh, fascinating story we shot it in 24 days in minus 18 degree temperature Whoa. so uh, my crew uh, has been uh, a magnum opus force to pull it off uh, uh, a film like that and it's looking really really stunning something some visuals that i'm really really proud as a as a filmmaker and having said that it's al- always as you just mentioned uh, you know i i am from goa so my cultural background is pretty much uh, goan but i think uh, that was always the hunger to leave the comfort zone even in my third short film uh, because the first two short films i did it in marathi my own mother tongue and i got national awards for both those two short films Amazing. but then my uh, my my whole uh, point was i'm i'm comfortable in my own language uh, can i just change it completely and that's when actually i did amritsar junction which is a full punjabi film it doesn't have even hindi it's a proper punjabi film uh which i matlab the it was different culture it's different time zone it is a story based in 1947 and i think that is the same thing which i carry forwarded when I, when it came to article 370 or baramulla and uh, it was it it is it, it's i always like when i can change the genre and its definition that's the always the um, the 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 aim uh, of course uh, i am a very young director i might not succeed completely in it but at least that's the hunger and that's the uh, you know that's the mission i'm going forward for oh, absolutely no wonderful and i think also um uh, because you know the, when we talk about goa and it's you know sort of history i mean there's a lot of bloody history that's there as well um yeah. and i think i think unfortunately we've not really had i mean i think there was an amitabh bachchan film called hum which released many years ago which i think kind of just spoke about the portuguese invasion and all of that but we've not actually had a film that really talks about you know the the the, the sort of historical aspects of goa and you know how that's really needed as well so would you also take it uh in your stride as well to maybe create stories like that in the future and do you think that and how confident do you feel um of course besides of course other to the supporting you i mean i mean he's so brilliant with the way he's put launched his production house but how do you feel like other you know big studios in bollywood will also come on board to uh support you in that aspect as well uh, i think i think i don't feel as an outsider per se uh, because uh, i think uh, it never happens with a director uh, often at least where i made three short films got two national awards and then i did two feature films in just single year uh, i have declared the wrap of my two films in just within span of 12 months uh literally and i mean it uh, i think that tells a lot about uh, the, uh how the industry is a uh, uh, kind of cooperating with the new talents so uh, i was just thinking that day i have never been on a set of a film which is not my own film uh, uh, so <laughs> i've never been on as a intern as a da or as an assistant i've never been uh, on on any other person set which is in fact uh, was a little bit uh, of my uh, i was always adamant Uh, i wanted to choose a different path i wanted to prove my point through my films and uh, if i don't have the budgets i'm going to make short films was a simple logic i had so if i don't i didn't i never wanted to uh, you know go through that assisting and all those uh, all those ways though they are correct ways i'm not denying that but just as a person as a as a character i was somebody who always loved uh, taking command uh, i had an experience of around 10 years of theater so that was always something that i cherished uh as in a drama and theaters and plays i was doing it along like as a writer as a director as a actor as well so somewhere down the line i was always uh, i was not ready to assist and you know just i wanted to prove that my story can make a mark and that's how i'm going to get my first film and this industry had somewhere down the line given that to me which i will always remember as a as a great launch for a young talent like me mm-hmm. having said that um so i don't know how other studios are going to receive me but looking at the response i definitely feel uh, the industry is definitely looking forward to new directors new languages uh, you know new styles of direction directors coming out and making a mark um, and the young directors the, the pool of young directors is really increasing day by day where you know bigger studios are putting their money putting their faith in young talents which is a great thing um, uh, having said that i think about your question about goa uh of course i mean as a goan i do get a little concerned that uh, my state hasn't matlab i i don't think the indian audience 
has seen the goa till now mm-hmm. no and i don't mean necessarily about history i'm not saying just of course that's a very valid point you're making that people don't know about how 450 years of portuguese rule that we went through it's double of what you know britishers did in india uh, it's the longest uh, if you talk about the colonization of the uh, of the state it's like 450 is like matlab it's it's huge but i'm not just talking about that that's of course a subset of the history but at the same time i don't think as a state uh, people know about goa because uh, there is a kind of a stereotype uh, image that is created uh, till now uh, which i always feel uh, feel that as a goan director i have a responsibility to somewhere in my career do a film which showcases uh, everything uh, truly the way it is i have so many friends in bombay in pune uh, who keep asking oh you're from goa so you must be living near the beach you must be a person who will be walking in three fourth pants and having uh, a nice uh, bottle in your hand and um, it's it's something that uh, they never get uh, they understand because of uh, because of the way it has been portrayed um, right. you know, uh, across the across our history so i think yeah as a goan director i do feel uh, i will definitely um, show the world and i am not meaning only india i want to show the entire world uh, because it's an amazing tourist place but it has it is heavily rich in culture so much so have so heavily that there are certain things which are not there anywhere in the uh, in the country but goa uh, it's agriculturally culturally every sector wise it's one of the one of the uh, most uh, the uh, you know most rich state i would say uh, when it comes to different nuances uh, different uh, you know different types of people working together staying together in harmony and everything and um, uh, that is not yet portrayed i think um, that yeah. that definitely uh, i would definitely try and do that in the future wonderful wonderful aditya honestly i am very impressed uh, not just by your filmmaking vision but even the way you articulate your views your perspectives of life of cinema i think it's it's so wonderful and a big kudos to aditya dhar and the entire team of article 374 also you know providing a platform for talents like yourself you know which i think it's it's so heartening and i think for us as as reporters as audiences it gives us that sense of enthusiasm that cinema really is evolving and you know it's getting to a nice direction so you know congratulations once again on article 370 and i really wish you all the very best for upcoming projects thank you so much thank you so much it was a pleasure talking to you it was an amazing interview thank you so oh, much oh thank you really pleasure is ours thank you so much thank you so much yeah, yeah.